Hi everyone. In continuation with the Laplace transform, we'll be dealing here with the Laplace transform of an integral. So by the end of the session, you'll be able to evaluate the Laplace transform of an integral. Okay, what is the statement? Statement says that if Laplace transform of f of t is f of s, then the Laplace transform of integration from 0 to t f of t dt is equals to f of s by s. So now if you'll observe here, there is no difference. If I'm if I'm adding this 0 to t here with this f of t, then the Laplace transform of this entire function is nothing but the Laplace transform of this f of t here, that is f of s divided by s. So that means what whatever the Laplace transform of f of t I have, I have to just have to multiply with this f of s with 1 by s. It's extremely simple. Just we'll walk through the proof. It is also a very simple one. So this is by the definition, definition of Laplace transform. Now we are applying this Laplace transform of 0 to t f of t dt is equals to what we have to do we have to do it 0 to infinity e to the power minus st 0 to t f of t dt that means what this f of t this f of t we are just replacing with integration 0 to t f of t dt now integration by parts because i have got two functions over here so integration we will have to integrate with respect to uh, t but it is with respect to um, uh, with the uh, integration by parts that is u into v rule of integration Okay, so now here, this function is, this, suppose this is I'm saying as the second, fun, first function and this as the second function. So this is my first function. This is the second function that is e to the power minus st as the second. First function is integration 0 to t f of t dt is my first function. Now in the first step, my first function remains the same. And I have to integrate the second function. I have to integrate the second function with respect to t. So it is e to the power minus st by s. Integration is from 0 to infinity minus integration of. Now again, I have to differentiate my first function now here. So if you observe. So this is the first function. Now first function is the 0 to t f of t dt. I have to integrate, sorry, I have to differentiate that function with respect to t. If you observe here, it's with respect to t. And this function, the first function remains the same. This is known as the integration by parts. And therefore, what will be what would happen here? It would be now if this first bracket would go to zero, right? It would go to zero because this lower limit and the upper limit will give me this function zero. And I will remain here with the second that is minus. Now this is minus, this is minus. I'll remain this minus minus becomes plus, and this would be one by s e to the power minus st f of t dt. Because this d upon dt of this integration zero to t f of t dt would give me just f of t. Why? Because the differentiation and integration, they are inverses of each other. So if I'm integrating with respect to T and if I'm uh, uh, differentiating with respect to T, both of them will cancel each other. And I'll just remain here with F of T. So this is what we have got it, 0 to infinity, 1 by S, e to the power minus ST, F of T. Now with respect to T, this integration, my S is constant. So that 1 by S will come out of this. And I'll remain here with 0 to infinity, e to the power minus ST, F of T, dt, which is by this is nothing but Laplace transform of f of t and this Laplace transform of f of t we have said that this is given to me as f of s and therefore this is f of s by s it's very simple proof okay now the Laplace transform of 0 to infinity sorry 0 to t t e to the power minus 40 sine 3 t dt now what is my task my task is to find out the Laplace transform of this entire function and I have to just multiply this Laplace transform of this function with one bias that's all so my target is to move and get the laplace transform of t e to the power minus 40 sine 3t so t into sine 3t the laplace transform of sine 3t is 3 upon s square plus 9 and it's the effect of d, uh, multiplication by t what is it minus 1 to the power n d to the power n upon ds to the power n now in the present case my t to the power 1 is here so it's everywhere it's coming out to be 1 so it's a minus so minus d upon ds of the Laplace, so minus d upon ds of 3 upon s square plus 9, which is 6s upon s square plus 9, the square. Now my, my suggestion for you all is to just get this answer on your own, on your, in your notebook. Then uh, this is done for t sine 3t. Now I will, I will be applying it e to the power minus 40 to this t sine 3t, which is nothing but the first shifting theorem. So this is this will give me the effect of first shifting theorem here. So now it is e to the power minus 40. And because of e to the power minus 40, it would give me s plus 4. 
So whenever I have got s with me in the then this function, I have to write it as s plus four. Now this is therefore it is just by simplifying you'll get this, and therefore the Laplace transform of zero to t t e to the power minus forty sine three t dt that means for the given function it is just by one upon s Laplace transform of this entire function and which is nothing but one by s into this entire one that is six into s plus four upon s square plus eight s plus twenty five the whole square into one by s is the Laplace of s. This is extremely simple uh, provided. Uh, you have to uh, have the understanding of what what would be the uh, the uh, the Laplace of effect of uh, multiplication by t. What is the first shifting theorem? Every step. So that is what I'm saying always. That is, if each and every session is connected. If you will not uh, go through the previous session, this session would be of no use for you right now. Okay. Then again, uh, as we have decided, this is uh, I have to go ahead with this e t e to the power minus three t sine square t zero to t would be at the end. So sine square t is one minus cos of two t by two, and therefore this Laplace of this would give me one by s one by two. One by s minus s upon s square plus four, and then effect of multiplication by t would be applied for here. And I think we have solved similar kind of question in the past video, the video of uh, effect of multi multiplication by t, that is t into. So it's minus one by two minus one upon s square minus this entire. It been it is nothing but the u by v rule is applied because of differentiation here, and. Uh, then it's one by two one upon s square minus s square minus four upon s square plus four the square. And therefore, the Laplace transform of this function is nothing but uh, nothing but. Now I have to apply this e to the power minus three t because of this minus three here. I have to write down every s as s plus three, s plus three here. If you observe s plus three, so wherever I have got my s in the previous uh, previous answer, it would be replaced as s plus three. Now this is just t, uh, t into e to the power minus three t side square t t t. Until uh, then, uh, the after simplification, you'll get the answer as this, and then just integration zero to t would be just by multiplication of one by s this entire function. So my final answer is one upon two s into one upon s plus three the whole square minus s square plus six s plus five upon s square plus six s plus thirteen the square, and this is what is the final answer for this particular question. So here you will observe we have used almost every uh, topic here, right? Okay, then now again, this is a difference between the previous and this question. What is the difference? Because this cos hyperbolic t has been given to me at the outside this zero to t. Okay, so now you will see the difference. Now what I have to do? I have to find out the Laplace of this uh, e to the power t cos hyperbolic t. So what is it? Laplace. This uh, question you can do it by two ways. Let me just explain you one way here. Laplace of cos hyperbolic t is s upon s square minus one. Then Laplace of e to the power t into cos hyperbolic t is nothing but by just the first shifting theorem would be applied here. Every s is getting replaced as s minus one. Why s minus one? Because it's s e to the power plus t is there. Then it is by simplification you will get this as s plus two. Uh, sorry, s minus one upon s into s minus two, and then. I have to apply the zero to t to the power t cos hyperbolic t dt. What would be that? This is just one by s times Laplace of e to the power t cos hyperbolic t. And what is the Laplace of e to the power t cos hyperbolic t? Is this. And therefore, my final answer is just uh, one upon s into this entire function, which is s minus one upon s square into s minus two, right? And now Laplace of cos hyperbolic t is zero to t e to the power t cos hyperbolic t dt. Now this cos hyperbolic t, this cos hyperbolic t can be replaced as e to the power t plus e to the power minus t by two, and this is this will get multiplied with this entire integral. So I'll be getting here two terms, one with e to the power t with this, and one with e to the power minus t with this. So now we have got the Laplace of this entire one, zero to t e to the power t cos hyperbolic t as this function. Now every If you observe, every s here will be re getting replaced as s minus one because of it is given to me here in the first step e to the power minus t. So if you observe here, uh, yeah. yeah. If you observe here, this e to the power t, right? E to the power t because of the plus t here, every s is getting replaced as s minus one, s minus one. S minus one here, right? And here in the second, it is e to the power minus t, 
and because of this e to the power minus t every s is getting replaced as s plus 1 s plus 1 s plus 1 here in this example or in this answer of or you can say it in this here f of s as fine and therefore this is the final answer for this particular question so you uh, would uh, just pause the video here check the difference between the previous question and this question where is the difference where is the difference here okay that you need to check it up okay then come back to our self observation self assessment slide which is this three questions i had given it to you and along with the answers you have to just now understand everything so if you observe here i have given you the question with the for shifting theorem i have given you the effect of division by t effect of division by t effect of multiplication by t for shifting theorem so everything is now getting clubbed right everything is getting clubbed now you have to understand that until and unless you will not have the concepts clear for effect of division by t effect of multiplication by t for shifting theorem second shifting theorem linearity property it is not possible for you to solve this type of question so you have to have that sequence along with this and that is what i have given my sessions and i have uploaded my session in such a way that even i have given the numbers also for the session to understand a particular topic suppose i wanted to go and understand the topic of uh, effect of multiplication by t so i should have the prior knowledge of first shifting theorem i should have the prior knowledge of uh, the linearity property and so on and that is why i am saying that everything is connected it's a chain until and unless your previous chain is not perfect the next chain will not get fit into it okay and that is why you have to have the uh, consistency in uh, studying as well as in the uh, in my sessions as well so this is what it's a self observation self assessment uh, slide for you keep learning and keep exploring the new things happy learning